I started the American Brain Tumor Association because I was looking for a cure for my daughter. I had a five-year-old daughter who had been diagnosed with a brain tumor. The CT scan was new, MRIs and all that kind of information that we have now was not available then, it didn't exist. They said that they could do radiation and that would be good for maybe six months to two years, but the tumor would come back and there would be nothing else they could do. I started thinking about the fact, well, you know, I can't just sit around and wait for the X to fall. We have to do something. So I was young and thinking that we're gonna find a cure and save her. I discovered that information about brain tumors was very scarce because you start thinking about, well, how do you know? What are the signs? Is there something you should be looking for? How do you talk to your doctor? What are the questions you should ask? And how do you get help? You know, where do you go for the next step? Someone contacted me. Her name was Linda Shanoff, and her daughter, Mickey Ray, had already passed away. She was diagnosed, and six weeks later, she was gone. And then it struck me. I said, would you be interested in starting an organization looking for a cure. And she said, yes, my parents had a finished basement in their house. We operated out of there, and the people involved were my family, Linda's family, friends. We were all volunteers. For many, many years, we had no paid staff. It took us time to figure out what our direction really was, and that finding a cure is the ultimate goal. But it's not something that happens overnight. Part of the reason that we started out actually giving funds to early researchers is because we didn't have a lot of money. Our early advisors, when we talked about where our money could make the most impact, it would be to help people who were in the earlier stages of their research so that then when they advance to a certain level, then they can go to NIH that gives big dollars. People with no information and no background on doing this did exactly what they needed to do by funding these researchers and taking a chance on people that had ideas, which is exactly how all funding works today. It is that seed capital, which is exactly what they were doing in the 70s, long before anyone called it seed capital. There's a long list of people, if you look at the doctors who were originally funded in their early research by us, have gone on to be really important major leaders in their areas. ABTA's two advantages is they're one of the first and they're, they're still strong and here gives them incredible credibility. 50 years of being the clearinghouse of information of where are the best trials, where are the best doctors, and I think if someone dropped $200 million on their lap tomorrow, you would want 99.9% .9 of that to go to researchers. When my son was diagnosed in 1975 and he was seven years old, I was terrified. Mainly, I had no knowledge or information about brain tumors. I did not know what to expect. I also became aware that I could not deal with the concept of brain tumor emotionally without understanding it intellectually. Fortunately, I had a friend who was able to gain me entry to a medical library, and I started doing research on my own. My list of questions and the answers that I found became the basis for our first patient education publication, A Primer of Brain Tumors. I went to the board and asked that they publish that publication and as well as found a program of printed materials, which they agreed to do. ABTA is very proud of uh, its role in establishing the collection of data regarding brain tumors. We incorporated the Central Brain Tumor Registry of the United States in 1993 and Congress did in fact pass the Brain Tumor Registry Amendment Act in the 2001-2002 session of Congress. In 1993, 
hosted our first National Patient Services family meeting, which took place over a weekend and encouraged families to come and invited the A-list of researchers to come and present topics that expressed their interests. It was marvelous and it satisfied so many different facets and I was watching people hugging each other and commiserating with each other and I could see how these relationships were, were forming. At the same time, I realized how important ABTA was because we were able to attract the absolute best of the medical professionals. Fundraising is and always has been a challenge. You know, you're asking your friends, you're trying to ask strangers for money, and how you reach these strangers is very different. I got it in my head that Christmas cards was a good way. In those days, everybody sent Christmas cards. Our entire dining room became huge books of Christmas cards that she would have to select. Christmas cards they were going to offer in this brochure and then go to the printer and print this brochure and then we would all sit in the dining room, my grandmother, my aunt, and we would just stuff a pose for weeks on end. One of the ways that really helped increase awareness was a PSA that Mickey Rooney did for us. And then Wendy's opened their first Chicago location and we had a black tie dinner. And then one of the Bears players, Virgil Carter, and his wife got involved. It was a prominent businessman, Rick Sowers, whose daughter was diagnosed, Mike Trainer, who worked for him, said to Rick, Rick, I can raise money for brain tumor research. Mike was a very serious motorcycle rider and he had all these connections. So he started putting that together, primarily with Honda, down in Atlanta, and then we did it up here in Chicago. Bob Collins, who was a very popular radio broadcaster on WGN in those years, happened to be a motorcycle guy. And so he used to lead the motorcycle rides for us. And so we saw right from the beginning how important this was, almost therapeutically, for the family to be able to do something. The Jingris family is probably the quintessential example of that. When a family member was, was diagnosed, they end up setting up a tube float on the Delaware River. And the reason it was done is because Joel, the kid, was one of these fun-loving guys and he had all these friends. This worked for them. This was therapeutic. This was a major fundraiser, over $2 million. Those were originally our beginning fundraisers. To have disease of any kind in your family is very difficult. And with your children, it's extremely difficult. The whole goal is to find an answer to brain cancer, and we'll continue to keep plugging away until we find the answer. We've come a very long way from where we started out, and a great deal has been accomplished, but we're a long way from done, and I have great hope for the future that we're gonna keep working on this. Our ultimate goal is to be out of business, but for the future, if you have a diagnosis, we'll be there to help you or a member of your family, but we, we still have a long way to go and we need help to get there.